Ryan, Sarah, we are doing it. We're what? What are we doing? We're in Spain. We're in Spain. Okay. We're in Spain. Um, that number up there? That's a one. I learned that yesterday. Um, yeah, we're in Cordoba. Cordoba is a city in Spain, southern Spain, in the Andalusia area. Andalusia? Andalusia. Andalusia. My Spanish friend is going to get on my case about these pronunciations. That's okay. He probably won't even watch these videos. F you, man. And we're walking around the old town. You can see these little narrow alleys. They're everywhere in Cordoba. We've been hanging out in the city for three days and all we do is walk around, eat, drink, and um, it's just like square after square. It's just like this. You come through an alley and then it opens up and you got orange trees, fountains, cobblestones. Look at the stone details and beautiful courtyards. Just like amazing. Like, look at this. And this is totally just a random spot. We're just walking around. This is like just everywhere in Cordoba. So I remember this from yesterday. Yesterday we did a little tour de plazas and I remember specifically this R because R stands for Ryan. Uh, but all these little tiles in here actually, I noticed this yesterday, every single one is different. Like kind of hand placed little pebbles. Some of them have letters in them. Some, there's a star over here. At one time, this city was the largest in Europe. Uh, it was basically like a Roman settlement, and then it changed over to the Visigoths. Vis Visigoths. Visigoths. Visigoths are French, I believe. The actually, I believe the word Goth, Gothic, comes from Visigoth. Is that correct? The Goths. The Vandals. I don't know. My history not great. Then the Moors took it over from there. They took it over and they basically made it the city that it is until it was taken over again. Um, what do they call that? The Catholics took back the Reconquista. So they took the mosques and they changed them to uh, cathedrals, churches. Um, some of them they tore down, some of them they just changed. They rebuilt like the one, it's called the Mes Mesquita. Mesquita is a giant, giant mosque turned into a cathedral. They still call it the Mosque Cathedral of Cordoba. Uh, they have multiple names for it. Uh, these notes I made are terrible. It says, it's considered the greatest piece of Moorish slices of ham. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously there's some kind of problem. Um, no, the uh, Mesquita is considered the greatest Moorish a piece of Moorish architecture in the world of all time. It's this grand, grand cathedral. Um, but that just tells you I do have ham on the brain and we're not going to go visit the Mesquita because I don't know, 10 euros to go walk into a cathedral. Probably worth it. But we're going to take that 10 euros and we're going to walk around today. We're going to drink a ton of booze. We're going to eat a bunch of food and you guys can join us. Right now we're headed for Vermouth. Vermouth? Vermouth. Vermouth is a very popular drink. It's the most popular aperitif in Spain. And what does an aperitif do? Prepares your stomach for food. Prepares your stomach for food. Cleanses We're gonna, your palate. Cleanses your palate. We're gonna get some vermouth and then we're gonna go grab lunch. So let's find a place. You know where we're going? No. We're just walking. Okay, let's look for some vermouth. Well, here I am drinking vermouth. Very sweet. It's not bad, actually. I like it. Uh, it's, so it's basically a fortified wine. Uh, it's blended with herbs. I don't know what herbs. Kind of medicinal taste. Sarah got the red. I got the blanco. It's all right. It's going to help us digest a ton of meat that we'll probably be eating later. Got some bullfighting stuff here. We got like a ham hanging there, kind of like that. And uh, it's a good way to start off the day. The day? Probably shouldn't say that. Vermouth, a good way to start off the day. All right, we're feeling good, but we are hungry. We need some food. We're headed out of the old town now to go to a restaurant. Uh, we like to go out of the out of the old 
area because it's, it's a little bit cheaper and less touristy. And is this the place? This is the place. This is Bar Marile, kind of old school Spanish bar, uh, restaurant bar. You can see the ham hanging up there. That's very, very popular. They put it on the thing and they shave it because um, a lot of the dishes have it. With the old lady behind the thing. We got the fruit machines. Guys are playing fruit machines. Have a look. Tell me what you like. We've been struggling a little bit with our Spanish because we like to go to these local places that don't have translations. Um, but we're actually picking it up pretty quick. Uh, Sarah's, you know, she's a genius, so she's practically fluent. I am a lot dumber. Look at this beautiful thing. This is flamenquín. Flamenquín is a specialty in Cordoba. The name actually means like Flemish, like a Flemish person. And they say that it probably came because um, there's some Flemish people came into town and they had blonde hair and they're like, look at this crazy blonde hair. It looks like the batter on this, which this doesn't really look all that blonde, but that's the story. Um, it looks like it's a sausage, it's deep fried, but if you cut it open, look at that. That's all meat. It's basically ham that's wrapped around a piece of pork loin and um, then deep fried. Mm. Mm. Well, very meaty. Tons of meat. That's solid meat. It's crazy. You get like a little smokiness and you get that like pork loin taste to it. She's looking at me like, hurry up, I want to eat this food. Give me this. What do we got here? Chorizo and morcilla. Morcilla is blood sausage. I'm really uh, impressed by this chorizo. Look at that. So spicy looking. Oh, you didn't get any calamari? Yeah, take some of that. Calamari with that. Mm. Love calamari. So this Fleming King, uh, it's made with the Serrano ham. Serrano ham is like a dry cured ham. Dry cured hams are really popular in Spain. The kind of the most popular one, I think, is the uh, Iber Iberico. Iberico is kind of a it's more expensive version of this kind. Um, I don't know what the differences are. Basically, I know they they cure it by covering it with salt and dry it out, and it makes it so it can last a long time. This chorizo is really good. It's like falls apart. It's like tons of spices in it. Uh, this blood sausage though, I'm actually really, really happy about. Ketchup on this? Where did the ketchup come from? No, it's just fat. <laughs> so a big meal like this, we're looking at, I think are about seven, seven bucks, seven euros each dish. We got a bunch of beers with it too. So it'll come out to maybe 20 euros. So we're in kind of the Jew Jewish quarters in the old town uh, at a bar it's called Bodega Guzman. And it's famous for its Morias. Morias. It's a sweet wine. And uh, the bar itself is really cool. It's older. It's kind of bullfighter themed. I think uh, an ode to Benito de Cordova. It's a famous bullfighter. Is this is what Fraser drinks. I forget. This is not what Fraser drinks. Fraser drinks sherry. This is uh, similar to a sherry. People compare it to a sherry, but it's not fortified. That's the difference, I guess. It's strong. Um, if you're expecting a wine, you're gonna be like, "Ooh." But um, actually, I quite like the taste of it now. It is sweet, but strong, so you sip it a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, it's aged in Solera. Aged in Solera is what I have written down, but basically... That literally means on the ground. Yeah, but that's the, the technique, the name of the technique. So they have different casks. Traditionally, the ones at the top were younger, and the ones on the ground were the oldest. Yeah. It's called fractional fermentation, so you take fractions of the oldest, and then you refill the oldest from the next youngest, and then you refill the next youngest from the youngest. 
so you have levels, and then so it's mixed age. The youngest that the oldest would be would be three and a half years. The youngest that the oldest would be? But it just gets older and older, and they don't take, they never completely empty their cast. So they just keep refilling from the next youngest. So essentially the drink has a mix of ages inside. Mm. It's complicated. It goes up to 20 years. 20 years. And then years. once you hit 20 years, mathematically, there's some like asymptotically, it becomes on average something like five years. So it's like they'll leave it in the same barrel for 20 years because you keep fractionally removing some and keep adding more young to the, to the new, to the oldest one. Well, that's the end of that chapter of my life. Uh, we're on the Roman bridge, ancient Roman bridge of sorts. The sun kind of just came down. I think we actually missed the sunset, but we were instead drinking. <laughs> Look at these kids go. Um, so that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it was good, and uh, we're just tired. So instead of doing a dinner tonight, we're gonna go pick up some empanadas. Look at these birds. That sunset's looking kind of nice still. Showed up a little late, but that's okay. Uh, okay, we'll see you guys in the next video. Before I wanna buy myself, I don't wanna hang around y'all. Pray for good health. One day I'm really gonna fall. Fuck around and buy the whole mall. Breaking that cake, flexing 700 in the bank. Not a superhero, I'm safe. Look at my face, look at my grades. Don't match up, no.